Jesus, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, good morning, saints. Welcome to Morning Manor with Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord, what a morning. Wow, it's a special day. This day, it's a good day, it's a wonderful day. We just want to say happy birthday to one of our Morning Manor uh, team members, Pastor Timothy, happy birthday. Say, may God bless you, increase you, enlighten your territory. You are a blessing to the nations. May God take you to the nations and the children. Wow, what a blessing we have this morning. It's a special day. Wow, good morning, saints again. It's morning, Mana. It's Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Why don't we bow our heads and pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and surely we are going to be glad and rejoice in it. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for the good things you are doing in our life. We thank you for you who began a good work in us. Indeed, you are going to accomplish it in the day of Christ Jesus Christ. We thank you for the miracles you have done in our lives and you are still to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the finished work of Calvary. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for, 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 for now we are seated at the right hand of the Father for our principalities and power. And now we can dominate in this world. Though we are in this world, we know we are not this part of this world. We give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you for this year, for the blessing you have stored for us, for the bread you have got in store for us, for all the good things you have for us, for the wars you are going to fight for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, good morning, saints. Today I said provision for your vision. When God gives you a vision, we must know that God will provide for any vision. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God will never give us dreams and visions without provision. Sometimes our dreams and our visions are so big, we mustn't limit them because the God who provides the vision will also bring the provision. Normally, your provision, as we said when we started this series, your vision is bigger than where you are. Your vision is bigger than your resources. Your vision is bigger from, from than where you came from. But we must understand as believers that is a God who provides for the vision. When he gives us any vision, he provides for it. He doesn't give us a vision without any provision. Hallelujah. We have to understand that it is your job to write the vision down. As God communicated, write it. As Habakkuk 2 tells us, write the vision down. So those who see it will run with it. The seers need it written down. Yes, write the vision down. Make it plain. Those who see it, you know, may run after reading it. What am I saying this morning? When God gives us a vision, we have to make it plain. That's our duty to take it out from the heart to put it down. And it is God's duty to raise people to surround the vision. It is God's duty to raise people to be around the vision in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So vision requires resources. Reason requires provision. Provision of people, provision of money, provision of different things, provision is to be fulfilled. So what am I saying this morning? As God gives us a vision, we have to make it plain. You know, you can say how. How do you do it? Remember in the issue of Mary, you know, when God sent the angel, I thank God we are in the season of angels. You know, when God sent the angel, you know, to, 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 to Mary, Mary says, says, how could it be? I've never known any man. Hallelujah. She was told, you are going to give a son. You are going to give a son. And this son is going to be of the Holy Ghost. Then Mary said to the angels, how can this be since I do not know any man? She knew that for anyone to conceive, she needed a man. But, you know, she knew that for the baby to come, she had a way of thinking. She had a way of perceiving. The Bible tells me, my ways are not your ways. Your, my thoughts are not my thoughts, says the Lord. So when God gives us a vision, sometimes we've got a thought through pattern. We've got a thought through plan that is supposed to come this way. But if we see in the issue of Mary, the Bible says, you know, you know, God a different way of doing it. Hallelujah. If you go to verse 35 of the same scripture, hallelujah, the Bible says, and the angel answered and said to her, 
the Holy Spirit came, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy Spirit, the Holy One, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So, you know, this child, the Holy Child Jesus, was not born of man, but the Holy Spirit overshadowed. There was a divine strategy. There was a divine strategy for the accomplishment of the vision, for the accomplishment of the dream. In your life today, what am I saying? God will give you vision which is bigger than you. God will give you vision which is bigger than your ability. But you see, in the issue of Mary, the Holy Spirit, as we pray for our vision, as we pray for our dreams, let's not leave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows how to do it and how to do it and the way to do it. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. Glory to Jesus. It says, now indeed, Elizabeth, your, your, your relative, has also conceived a son in an old age. And this is now the sixth month for her. She was called barren. What am I trying to say? God provide for a vision in a different way. For Mary, she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth, she was barren. She had a, a condition. They were in old age, but God made it conceived. The way Mary conceived and the way Elizabeth conceived was different. They were all divine visions. They were all divine establishing, but they were different ways. Why am I saying this? When God gives you a vision, your friend next year, door might have a so similar vision to yours. But sometimes God is a different way to fulfill your vision than the next door neighbor. So don't look around. Don't look here and there for the fulfillment of vision. Don't look here and there. Oh, hallelujah. Don't look here and there. Don't look here and there. Hallelujah. What should you do? You focus. What should you do? You look on the Lord. What should you do? You wait on the Lord. You hear what God wants you to do in the, in the vision. Don't be discouraged. Sometimes your vision is too big that those people have around you, have been around you, have never walked in that path. Some people who have never walked in that But one thing, there's one man who knows your path. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. He established the end from the beginning. And he walks with you. The Bible says he will never leave you or forsake you. So what am I saying this morning? I always say he's the first man to appear on the scene of your life. And he's the last man to leave you. Everyone can leave. But the Bible tells me you will never leave us nor forsake us. So when God gives you vision, you must know and understand that vision can be different. And the way God will make us to accomplish it, it will be this vision differently. The resources will come in different ways. The establishment will come in different ways. What do we need to do? Hear God. Desire to hear God. Desire to hear God. You have the vision from God. You write it down and God will provide for the vision. Can I have, can I have a better amen? God will never give us a vision without a provision. Provision is coming your way. Go to never have vision without provision. Let me start again from the book of Genesis going up. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When God wanted to save the children of Israel, there he sent Moses. But Moses was a stammerer. He needed resources. He needed an Aaron. God provided an Aaron for the vision to be provided. God wanted his children to be moved, you know, from Pharaoh, from Egypt to the promised land. In the journey, God was a God of provision. He provided daily. When we talk about provision, we are not talking about tomorrow. We're talking about daily provision. The miracles you see daily to the fulfillment of your vision. Yes, from the first day they left Egypt to the final day they entered the promised land, they saw God. They saw the provision of God. Provision from the first day. When they were departing, you know, they, you know, they got favor and they collected jewels. They collected gold from the Egyptians. They got favor from their enemy. That's God who provided for them. Oh, glory to Jesus. On the way, when God parted the Red Sea, he provided for them. He provided an escape. 
I know last week was that our divine escape when they crossed the Red Sea, when the enemy was pursuing, Pharaoh and his chariots was pursuing, and the Red Sea was in front of them. They didn't die there. God opened their way in the Red Sea. They went through the Red Sea, and the Red Sea closed, and their enemies were destroyed. destroyed. Wow, what am I saying? God might have given you a vision. And as the year begins, you see, you think like you're closed up. You can't see where you're going. You can see where you're coming from. But this God is a faithful God. He will make a way. When we talk about provision, it's a lot of provision. It's provision of resources. It's provision of strategy. These are some of the scriptures to remember. You know, when things are not going through, do you dump the vision? Do you shipwreck your faith? No. What did God do? You know, what did God do to the children of Israel? As Pharaoh's chariots were pursuing, you know, and the Red Sea was in front. He opened the Red Sea. And as they were going through the wheels of, of the chariots of the of, of the Egypt um, of, 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 of the Egyptians were made so difficult to 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 to, to, to I mean to, to walk. I mean to do the chariots, it was difficult for the chariots, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know of Pharaoh, you know, to, to move in the sea. Why? God removed the wheels. It made it difficult. That was a provision. When God gives you a provision, he wants you to take you somewhere. Yes, tribulation will come, trouble will come, things will rise on the way, but God will ever provide. In the same way, in the world, like I said, when they started to murmur, they were complaining that, you know, they needed, you know, they needed to eat. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. God provided manna for them. Manna every day, they ate. God provided for them coils, they ate. The Bible tells us, you know, their clothes didn't grow old on them. And none was feeble among them. Their shoes grew with them in the wilderness. They grew with them in the wilderness. Why is it God who provided for the vision? It's them who look back. It's them who miss Egypt. But God himself provided for them. What am I saying this morning? As we are walking in the gen of life, we are going to, to meet some obstacle. We are going to meet some issues on the way. But let us know that when God has given us a vision, he has got a way. That's why the Bible tells us he makes a way where there seems to be no way. As long as the vision is there, as long as he gives you something to do with your life, and it's from him, he will make a way for you. Oh, can I have a better amen? Hallelujah. So provision doesn't just talk about tomorrow, about today. Most of us, God is doing so much for us in the day-to-day -day life. The Bible says the God who provides, you know, you know, you know, you know, He daily loadeth us with blessings. In the book of Psalms, the Lord of our salvation, it's a daily affair. He daily loadeth us with blessings. You know, the God of our salvation. I want you to check every day and understand that each day we must thank God for provision. Each day we must thank God for what He's doing in our lives. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. If we go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Glory to Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible tells us, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You know, those blessings, spiritual blessings, you know, in the heavenly places, they, can man they will also manifest in our last year. God wants you to make it. God wants you to have what he, has, what he has promised you. God wants you to have that vision. He can't give you a vision and tell you to scout out for it. You know, when he gives us vision, we have to hear from him. We have to know how do we go about to fulfill that vision. Sometimes it's not proper, it's not godly, that we get stressed, we got stressed, we get mental instability because we are thinking, how is it going to do? What we must do, we must go before God, bask before God, and God will show us the way. God gave you those children, he know he is going to take them through school. God gives you that vision, that business, he know how he's going to look after it. God gave you that ministry, he will take care for it. God gave you that wife. 
God gave you things around you. I didn't say be lazy, don't think. But I'm saying, as we think, we are saying, God, what is the strategy? My strategy is not the strategy next door. There is a strategy for me. There were lots of barring people during the time when Elizabeth was barred. But what did she do? You know, she got a blessing from God. No matter her age, God is the faithful God. If we talk about Abraham, our father of faith, you know, Sarah was beyond the age of conception. But what did God see? He did. God provided. Hallelujah. You know, the, angel, the angels of the Lord, when they visited them, you know, he promised that you know, she was going to have a child. And behold, the Isaac came. Sarah laughed. Because from what was around, you know, it didn't make any sense that with the age she was going to have a child. But God being faithful, there was provision. Why was there provision? Because God had shown Abraham a vision. He said, look up in the, in the sky. As many as the stars are, those will be your descendants. But in the natural, if we could see the, our father, you know, of faith Abraham, the man was very old. And the wife was also very old, and she was barren. But God, after he spoke a vision, is bound by his words. He made a way, a miracle came. When God promises you something, and it's beyond you, don't doubt God, believe God. The Bible says in the book of Romans, being not staggering in faith, our father of faith didn't stagger in faith. He was, he didn't stagger. You know, even if the wife was barren, she had, she had passed the age of conception. She didn't stagger in faith. She di he didn't stagger in faith. The Bible says there, you know, I mean, Romans chapter 4, verse 19, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already, already, already dead. Since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, there was a situation, but she didn't consider. She knew that God was going to provide. Let's go to verse 21. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The next scripture. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and being fully convinced that he who had promised will also able to perform. In this season, the one who promised you, the one who given you this vision is also able to promise you. To, to fulfill. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. Today, I want to challenge you. Tomorrow, we are going to, to continue with this um, topic of a provision. But my challenge, I want you to believe God again with that vision you already have. Don't, don't cut your vision in half. Don't make it suit your, what you have now. God is a God of miracles. The Bible says, being fully convinced that he who promised is well able. Today, I want you to work on your full conviction. Be fully convicted. That is well able. The things might be facing the other side, but be fully convinced. May you be fully convinced. May you be fully convinced. God is faithful. He'll provide for you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. God will design. You know, God will design that purpose for you. Can also design the provision for you. He's a good God. As we obey the vision, before we see, obeying vision is living the realm of faith. You obey vision. Vision is different from where you look. If you look at yourself and look at your vision, they are so different apart. They are tangents apart. But God is faithful. In between your present and your vision, it's God. It's God's provision. As we are willing and obedient, the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the goodness of the land. Today is a depart. I want you to be willing. Be willing. Be obedient. You shall eat the goodness of the land. Be willing. Be obedient. God is faithful. God is going to send provision to you. God is going to send provision for you. Your strategy is coming. Your victory is coming. He's making a way for you. Your vision is going to speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't fear. Don't trim your vision. Don't do a special edition for your vision. Make it plain as you feel in your heart, as you feel God has given you. And God is a faithful. The God of the exceedingly. The God of the abundance. The God of the above. The Bible says you can do exceedingly, abundantly, 
above all we think or imagine according to his power. You know, glory to Jesus, which is working in us. So today, as I leave this promise, pro, 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 I mean, and platform, I say the God of the exceeding, the God of the abundance, the God who does the above, may you work in your life. May you provide for that vision. Don't fear, no matter what is coming your way, don't speak against your vision. Speak well about your vision. He's making a way for you. He's making a way for you. He's making a way for you. As you go out there, lift up, dust yourself. He's a faithful God. You want to see that vision accomplished. What you started, you will finish. The same hands which started are the same hands will finish. The same hands you have started that vision are the same hands you are going to be provided to finish the vision. God bless you. And good morning. Have a blessed day ahead. If you are here, you are not born again. You have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of, my, of your life. Just say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. With my mouth, I call, with my heart, I believe. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you and good morning. Because you want the money. Lion. He want the money. He want the money. Liar.